Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And today I'm coming to you from my home in Sedona, Arizona, and I'm not outside because it's really hot out there, but I had to turn off the AC for sound, so it's actually pretty hot in here. <laughs> so you might see me sweating a bit, and that's all good because I have an incredible view of the red rocks through my windows here. And red rocks are what we're gonna talk about today. Well, red and black gemstones, because I'm gonna share with you my 10 favorite gemstones and crystals for healing and boosting your root chakra. Feels like this video is way overdue, <laughs> so I'm happy to bring it. And I would like to give a shout out to Vodka Danali of Crystal Castle here in Sedona, Arizona. She has a beautiful store with tons of choices for different stones, and she is an amazing uh, gem expert, and she's a gem herself. She also carries my books, and my chakra tattoos. So if you come to Sedona, I cannot recommend highly enough to visit my friend Vadika and say hello to her for me at Crystal Castle. Okay, so thank you for your help, Vadika. And I want you all to know that I'm going to cover a few things on this first video because this is going to be a series and I'm going to share with you my favorite gemstones for each chakra. I probably won't have 10. You know I'm kind of a root chakra freak and I know a lot of you love to watch the root chakra videos on my channel. So I'm doing 10 for the root. I might do a few less for the rest of the chakras, we'll see. But today, uh, this video is going to first cover some basics that I won't have in the other videos of the series as to things like why the, the rocks, the stones heal us and things like that and how you can test which ones are right for you. Uh, so please watch this introductory sec section because that's needed. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is why do uh, crystals and gemstones heal us? Because they put out a frequency, a vibration, and so do we. And each one of our chakras has a different vibration. So when we match certain stones at particular frequencies with the frequency of each chakra, we can heal and boost that chakra. A lot of people really like to put this down. Like if I'm wearing a stone, they have some secular people in my life that are like, what, you think that like heals you? Like that gives you some energy? And I'm like, yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> and, and then I tell them, think about it. A quartz, a small piece of quartz in a quartz watch can make it run consistently, phenomenally well for long, long periods of time. And we've seen this throughout the world. We have quartz watches everywhere. Right? So why wouldn't the all stones put out a vibration? Because they do. And this is called the piezoelectric effect. So it's actually a scientifically shown thing how quartz puts that energy out. And so scientists can actually measure the energy of stones. Stones have energy and so do we. Now where the interpretation part comes in is what works best for you. And while there's quite a bit of agreement and overlap in the gem world by people who work with gems, gemstones, there's also a lot of disagreement. So I wanna say, follow your intuition, follow your knowledge, your desires, find out what's best for you. Start with informational videos or articles like what I'm doing right here, and then test them. And how do you test a stone? Well, you simply interact with it. So you go to a store and you touch it, you look at it, see if the color attracts you, see if the texture feels good to you, the density, the weight in your palm, uh, change hands so because your right and left sides might feel things differently and check, close your eyes and see if you can feel the energetic hum, if you can feel the way your body's communing or not with the stone. And then, does it make you feel happier or lighter? Does it make you feel almost nauseous? Some stones can, and if they do, it could be actually a healing crisis, but just see if you're drawn still to that stone or not, okay? But test it out with yourself 
and in, in the end of, at the end of the day, go with what feels good to your body, your unique preferences. Okay, how do we utilize, how do we heal with these stones? Real simple, you can wear them as jewelry or with the root chakra, you can put it, if you're wearing pants, in your pockets, uh, the front pockets or the back pockets and get very close to the tailbone area of the root, especially with the back pockets. I love that about roots. So you can put your touchstones in your pockets. Obviously with the throat, you can get an amazing effect by wearing a throat, uh, stone or on a necklace, right? Or a heart stone on a long pendant necklace. So jewelry is a great way to wear it. You can also uh, use it for decor. The really big stones are great for decor around your house. Like a big piece of amethyst will bring a lot of peace to your abode. The problem is they cost thousands often, thousands. So if you want to work with smaller stones but have them as decor, I recommend having an altar, right? Create an altar because what an altar does is really bring your eye to those stones. And then not only do you get affected by their vibrations when you're near the altar, the vibrations that they're emanating or, or that are, they're emitting, but you're also going to be affected by knowing by the, the way that you've been sacredly honoring your healing. Like if you're working on root chakra and you have a bunch of root chakra stones, <laughs> or if you're working on all of your chakras and you lay them out in a color line in the order of the chakras, seeing that puts a consciousness into your attention and attention is what steers energy, right? It's the steering wheel of energy. So things like wearing them or laying down and placing them on each chakra, those things do it unconsciously. They just work directly with your body. But then there's conscious ways you can do it where with an altar, you get the unconscious effect of just the, the emitting energy coming from the stones, but you also, you have like a reverence for the stones that affects your own attention. And then when you change your attention toward a particular stone and chakra, you shift toward more healing energy. I say work with both the unconscious and the conscious whenever you can. So those are some ways that we can use them to heal. The next thing I want to share is a general rule because I love, love, love this general rule. And it, it's so simple, it doesn't almost seem believable, but it really, really works. And this rule is when you want to heal a chakra, look for the stones in the color palette of that chakra. The primary color and the different tones of that primary color or the secondary color. Like today we're going to look at root, so it would be red for the primary color and black or brown and earth tones for the secondary color. When you work on heart, you have green as the primary color and you have uh, pink, I was going to say rose, but that's also part of pink, pink as the secondary color. And there's a lot of really good pink stones that will heal and boost your heart chakra. So look at color when you walk into a store. Isn't that fun and simple? Now I'm not saying that there aren't exceptions. There absolutely are exceptions and there are stones that will boost your solar plexus that aren't yellow, right? Or stones that will boost your heart that aren't green. Absolutely. But if you don't know stones at all, the best rule of thumb is go looking for the primary or secondary color of the chakra you wish to heal. Makes sense, doesn't it? I love how simple things are when we just break it all down. Okay, I want to just say a few things about the root chakra. First of all, how do you know if you have a weak cho root chakra or not? Well, I have a really good video that I shot in the Grand Canyon, so it's got a pretty background. I think it's got, at the time of this shooting, like a hundred thousand views or something. And that, in that video I share the signs that you have a weak root chakra. So watch that if you're not sure if you do have a, a weak root. Uh, it never hurts usually to have root, but I will tell you that if you have issues of um, 
depression that's usually over root or if you like to hoard things you like to collect things that's over root like I also have a video about signs of having over root so you can watch that too you could probably watch both of those videos and then know what you want to do with root but when you have an overage you don't want to work with the stones of that chakra because it's just going to boost more of what you have too much of already right we're looking for balance we're looking to just be our natural selves Okay guys, now let's talk about the root chakra. The root chakra is often called the survival chakra. And I like to break camp from that because most of us aren't in a survivalistic position watching this video and thinking about it as survival might pull us into survival thinking rather than thrival thinking. So I like to think of the root chakra as being the foundational chakra. And it's about our basic human need for safety for family, for home, security as well as safety for security, for um, basic financial security. It is tied to wealth because it's tied to the physical realm and our ability to work with this physical realm. So it is tied to money, it is tied to wealth. Uh, but more financial stability than anything else when you look at a really balanced route because it's about us having enough money that we never worry. We don't worry, right? And that's just when we're really, really stable financially. And again, stability is a huge quality of the root chakra. Vital health throughout the body, since our entire body is represented uh, by the root because it's the 3D world and this is us in our body in the 3D world. and. You know, like I said, it's just roots, ancestors, the word roots even there. It's about memory, organization. I don't want to overwhelm you, but anything foundational. Can you feel that? And I have many videos here that will tell you more about the root. So once you've figured out if you want to boost the root, or maybe you know people that are very anxious or showing a lot of signs of having a weak root that you want to um, share a stone or give them a gift. So Let's find out which 10 stones are my favorites for healing and boosting the root chakra. Are you ready? I'm gonna start with six red stones and then I'm gonna to go to four black stones. Of the red stones, um, I will share some that I like, but nothing is in any particular order except for number 10. I save the best for last. Number 10 is my favorite stone of all stones. So that's my favorite stone of all time. Hard to say, but I just love the energy feeling that it gives me. Stone number one is red jasper. Now, red jasper, I'm inserting a picture here for you to see because Vodka shared with me both red jasper that almost looks carnelian, almost like an orange stone, and it's got a more clear tone to it. And then the red jasper I'm more familiar with, which is the more um, layered version of red jasper when it has different colorings in it. That's a little more common for me. And that one actually reminds me of the earth tones that I see here in Sedona, even looking out my window right now. So that's interesting because red jasper is tied to our earth connection, to our sense of feeling safe and connected to nature, to mother earth. And then that allows us to feel safe and worry free. And sometimes in this modern era, we forget that we are part of nature. We are part of Mother Earth. So when you want to remember that you are a child of Mother Earth and you are connected to all of nature, grab some red jasper and feel how it relaxes you and makes you feel more safe. Additionally, red jasper is an EMF protector. Now many root chakra stones are, and I'll be saying this a lot, so I want to tell you what this is if you don't know. EMF frequencies are the frequencies that come off of our modern electronics, and they can be pretty discombobulating for our own energy field. They can throw us out of whack. So it's nice to wear or have around our electronics stones that are good EMF protectors. Red Jasper does protect, many of the black stones do as well, and in fact, number 10, my favorite stone I believe, and many believe, is the best EMF protector in the world, on this planet. Okay, that's Red Jasper. Number two, Garnet. 
Garnet is, for me, a gorgeous stone. Can you feel it? I love garnet in jewelry. It has a very burgundy color to it. In fact, the single stone that wasn't in jewelry that Vadika gave me for this video actually looks almost black, but it's just a dark burgundy and it's such a thick, big stone that it's like dark water looking so dark. It's blue, but it almost looks black because it's so deep. That's uh, why this garnet that I'm showing you looks um, so dark. But garnet is, it has a dignity to it. It has a cousin stone for jewelry that I'm going to bring up, uh, I think for number six, I think it is. Uh, its color, though, is more burgundy, and it's about manifestation, and it is also about revitalizing. It purifies your blood, and some say it regenerates your DNA. The thing I like to think of it for, though, that some say it's good for is specifically commitment. Because I didn't get a lot of stones that are about commitment, and commitment is a big root chakra property, because root chakra is about sticking with things, stability, staying with it, staying on it. It's about habit, it's about routine, and it's about commitment. So maybe if you want to commit to something for yourself, or if you want to commit to someone, consider a garnet ring to actually put the commitment right in the ring. Number three, cinnabar. Vodka shared a beautiful skull with me. I love this skull. It's so cool. And Cinnabar has that very, I think it's perfectly named because it reminds me of cinnamon and it has that cinnamon tone, the sparkly orangey tones of cinnamon. It's a big, big manifestation stone. It is considered the merchant stone. So it ties into business, business and manifestation. Mm. So Vodica was smart. She has a has this particular stone that she has shared right on her front desk that you can go see if you visit Sedona at Crystal Castle. So what could Cinnabar do for your business if you keep it around your work area or if you have a business for the public, you keep it on your front desk or somewhere where it's visible to the public. The, this is a wealth stone merchant stone they call it and a manifestation stone but i want to add one more thing i saw a few experts believe that cinnabar is good for weight disorders and weight disorders whether being too heavy or having anorexia or bulimia and being too light on either side of the spectrum because the body is so related to the root and mass and muscular and all of that you know feel mass gravity, weight, all of that's about root. So weight issues are related to the root chakra. So if you're wanting to just balance things out weight-wise, cinnabar is also good for that. Now remember, we have to set intentions and do things as well because in the third dimension, in this physical world that the root chakra rules, we have to participate. Patience is a huge root chakra trait because in the crown arena and the third eye arena, miracles can happen just like that, boom, just like that, because they're vibrating so quickly. But down in the 3D realm, and particularly at the lowest part, which is the root, we need to master things. We need to be patient and hardworking and take our time. So everything I'm mentioning, you utilize the stones and utilize them over time. Be consistent with them. Don't expect them to just do it like that, okay? Although. If they move all the way up to your chakras, all kinds of things can happen, right? Stone number four is bloodstone, bloodstone. And again, bloodstone is mixed. It can look almost to me, it can have those mixed colors like red jasper can, and I saw some that had greens in them. Um, I wanna share that this one really, really grounds you. And as I was just telling you before how important patience is, guess what? Bloodstone helps with patience. And of course, it's called bloodstone. So what does it do? It helps you heal your blood. Particularly, it can help heal anemia. So if you're lacking an iron in your blood and you're bruising a lot and you have anemia, you might want to carry a bloodstone with you. 
Stone number five is, and I thought this was six, number five is the ruby that I talked about. Ruby to me is the counterpart to garnet. They're both, they both make beautiful jewelry. They're both very clear, but garnet is very dark. It's a burgundy and ruby tends to be more of a red. Now, ruby is a hard, hard stone. So I also like to think of ruby as representing endurance. And the root chakra is about endurance, about lasting over time. The ruby is the third hardest stone. You have the diamond, you have moissanite, and then the ruby. The ruby has been loved by the wealthy and the, the, those of nobility throughout the ages. It has been traded probably because it lasts so well. It's considered something that gives us good vitality and health. And it's also just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. So ruby and garnet are better for the finer jewelry. And then the more earth uh, stones are good for the more modern types of jewelry, if you can feel what I'm talking about. All right, stone number six is red coral. Now, red coral excites me because I decided to use red coral when I was creating something, I shouldn't say was, but it's mostly finished. I've been creating a Chakra Boosters uh, healing bracelet. And I have some really cool things that I've done with that bracelet. Particularly, I brought in stone number 10. So meet me there at number 10 with that magical stone because that's a hard stone to come by. And I bought it in mass and made it into bracelets for you. Now I'm gonna have a very limited amount and I'm hoping I'll have them out at least by 2021. But guys, these are gonna be magic. And I used for the red stone, cause I had black stone all the way around and then I used on the bracelet one colored stone for each chakra. I used red coral cause of its beautiful bright color, but also because I love this about red coral. It's of all the stones that boost the root, this one boosts the root toward the sacral. It's ready orangey, it's ready orangey and think about it because the sacral's orange, right? It also is harvested from the bottom of the ocean. So it's on the ground floor, it's on earth, but at the bottom of the ocean under the water. So coral, of course, interestingly, decreases depression because the root chakra is the, de the depression chakra if we get too heavy in root, if we get too much root. And the sacral chakra, the contrast to root, is the joyous, playful chakra. So because red coral has these properties of coming from water and having this orangey tone, it carries this sacral energy. That's what I love about it. People say it also connects us to nature, which brings us back to it has that property a lot like red jasper. Do note that people often dye red coral and still it's gonna emit its energy, okay? But if you have a problem with dyes, be aware that it's often dyed. Okay, you guys, we're now gonna move into the black stones for the root chakra. The first black stone for the root chakra, number seven on this list is hematite, also known as magnetite. This is probably, I'm not sure, but I believe it's the cheapest stone I have on the list. You can usually get hematite really affordably and it acts magnetic. So if you have a bunch of hematite stones together, they'll, they'll just go together. <laughs> so I'm giving you a picture of that in this video of them all attached. And, um, I want to talk about what it does, but I also want to share my personal experience. For me, it seems like I'm being, increasing my tolerance for hematite, but I'm still not in great resonance with it. But back when I didn't have much root chakra at all, or I had zero, I had a chronically weak root chakra, it would literally ache on my body. And I would just have to take it off. So if a stone doesn't feel good to you, take it off, no matter what its properties are supposed to be. But I know many people who I think are more root by nature who swear by this stone. And it's good for grounding, it increases your memory because memory is root chakra. Elephant is the root chakra animal and the elephant never forgets, right? These are all tied in, you guys. I have a video on animals for the root chakra. I'll leave the link for that below as well. They say that hematite also increases your red 
blood cells. So for grounding, increasing your memory, and I believe it also creates more magnetism. Magnetism. That's why it's a magnet. You know, there's symbols to all of this stuff. You will draw more to you versus having to go out to get it. And funny, I haven't really felt too magnetic <laughs> in my life. It's been about going out and getting things, and I couldn't even wear hematite at first. And now I can, and I'm going to keep experimenting with it. But check it out for yourself and see how it works for you. You may magnetize some really cool things. Stone number eight is black obsidian. Uh, most of the stones, almost all of the stones that I'm sharing in this video are from Crystal Castle and Vodka shared with me a rainbow black obsidian, which is a type of black obsidian. And I feel that the rainbow black obsidian deals with more of all of the chakras. It's good for the root, but then all of the chakras as well. Whereas just regular black obsidian is a little more just for root. Black obsidian was loved by the natives and it's really well known as an EMF protector and to protect you in general against negative energies. And in fact, it protects so much that it can even help you clear trauma, clear past trauma. So if you're doing a lot of work to clear trauma, check out black obsidian. Number nine, black tourmaline. There's a lot of black tourmaline out there. And the thing that's different about black tourmaline, I believe it's also does some protection as the other stones do. But the thing that I really want to point out here, because it's different than others, is that it is noted for its ability to heal the physical areas that are governed by the root chakra. So it can heal your bowels, it can heal your legs, right? Including your knees, shins, your feet, and all the bones in your feet. So this is a great one for physical ailments about anything in your lower body that's related to the areas of the root chakra, right? It also decreases stress and fear. And most of the root chakra stones actually will decrease anxiety or what people call stress and also still alleviate fear because they just make you feel more safe, more secure more grounded, more a part of the earth. And that leads us to, ta-da, number 10. I discovered this stone. I'm not gonna bring it up yet, just yet. I discovered this stone when I was in, um, I was in Spain, Valencia, Spain. I'm thinking of the store right now. I cannot think of the name. The Africa is in the name. It's a lot of African uh, stuff and stones. And the owner was so interesting. And he took the stone and he showed me how in an open circuit to a light bulb, it would light up the light bulb. And it did. And then he took another plain black stone and put it up there and it didn't light up the, the light bulb. And I thought, wow. So I bought this stone. I bought a couple of them from him. And I couldn't believe how much I could feel it. What is this stone? Number 10, my favorite root chakra stone, which is also an all over, all chakra stone, shungite, shungite. Now shungite is not expensive like ruby or garnet because it's actually a kind of crude stone. I'm wearing it right around my neck right here. In fact, just a few days ago, or I guess it was a week now, when I was in Mexico, I dropped this a pendant on the floor and a little chip came out of the edge and I was so sad because this I love 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 this necklace and I didn't understand why until I was doing a little bit more research about Shungai Shungai for this video I only have known that Shungai makes my heart chakra open huge now it's a root chakra remember when you feel safe your heart opens it's a root chakra stone but I think it was around 1999 or maybe 96, some scientists got a Nobel Prize for showing, for working with Shungite and showing that it has something called fullerenes inside of it, fullerenes. And it's the only stone that does have fullerenes. And fullerenes, when um, looked at under an intense uh, microscope are these um, molecules that look like little soccer balls. So they have these hexagons. Now, I don't know if you guys know my story about the hexagons and how Masura Emoto showed that when you put love, the word love or the energy of love on water, it creates hexagons, okay? And I put hexagons, just my son and I designed hexagons just 
out of our intuition for the, the heart chakra tattoo. It has hexagons on it. And this little, these little molecules inside of Shungite actually have these, it's spherical and they have hexagons like a little um, soccer type ball. Wow. When I read that, I was amazed because all I know is what I feel and I have been feeling for the last, I want to say four years or so since I found Shungite, three to four years, I have been wearing it so much more than any other stone and it gives me so much love energy and so much healing and I feel safe and grounded too. And this stone is known more than any other stone for its ability to protect us from EMF. So keep an eye out for my bracelets. You guys, I'm so excited to share them. I do not take this chakra healing stuff lightly. When I'm going to create a bracelet, if I'm going to write something, I take a long time doing it and I get it right for you. And Shungite is only made one place in the world, in Russia, and only one place in Russia. And I'll probably say it wrong, but it's Karelia is the way it is spelled Karelia Russian, Russia, and because of that, it's far more expensive than all kinds of black and in, inert stones, many black stones that I could use on a bracelet, but I wanted it to be mostly Shungite and then seven chakra stones. So my chakra boosters healing bracelets will be out, I hope, early 2021. I hope because I still have to do the packaging of it and stuff and I'm not sure how many I'll have you guys because Shungite is expensive and limited so it will cost more than bracelets that you buy that have lava stone or something like that and it will be so worth it and I can't wait to share it with you. So that's it you guys, Shungite's my very favorite. What's your very, very favorite root stone? I really love all root stones though because you know how much I need root chakra. And if you need root chakra, play with these stones. Try them out, see which one works with your field. And if anything really doesn't feel right for you, notice if you're just moving through a healing crisis, that can be a good thing to move through a healing crisis, but if you continue to come back to a stone and it doesn't feel right, you definitely want to just let that stone go. Okay? So look for the other videos coming in the future. These take a lot of homework and time on my part, you guys. A lot of visuals to add and stuff like that. So be patient with me in rolling out the rest of this series. And next week, probably, um, I'll either be able to bring you another stone video or we'll move on to part two of the Chakra Talk. So in any case, I'm looking forward to seeing you on that next video. And until then, have a very grounded, safe, and peaceful week. Blessings.